Hi, I'm Rich Baker from Rollin' and Riches, and this is Improv Breakdown. Who's in charge here? Oh, yes. my circus, my mic, <laughs> all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. You asked for it. Yeah. yeah. Me? Get in the lab. Get in the lab. <laughs> what? Yay! <laughs> right. Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to the Improv Breakdown. Very excited to have Kat Kenny on out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Improviser, teacher, studied a lot of different places. Very fun. Has a lot of classes going on right now. Kat, thank you so much for being on the Breakdown. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, a longtime fan, first time participant. <laughs> anyway, yes, you're welcome and thank you. <laughs> yep, yep. Works for me. I love it. Uh, so let's start in the beginning. At one point you weren't an improviser, and then at some point you and improv crossed paths for the first time. Can you tell me about it? Oh, we did, yeah. So I kind of had this, like, flirty, like, you know, like, improv is the stranger across the room I would see at parties for a long time. And I was like, I like you. And it was like, I like you. But we were being really coy with each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, I was into theater in high school. And, you know, did that, got my degree in theater and acting um, at the University of Utah, their actor training program. And I did like a little bit of improv. There's like an improv club, but it wasn't very serious. And then I did a, a short form troupe. But again, it was so on the side. It was like we'd rehearse once every now and then. Yeah. Knock your socks off. Um, great group of people. Um, did some good stuff and just kind of put that aside when I moved. But anyway, long story short, I moved to New York City to go be a working actor. And oh. I basically worked the whole time to pay my rent and spent days auditioning. And I was like, I'm moving back home. I'm going back home to Florida. And like right after I decided this, I finally went and saw a show at Upright Citizens Brigade. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> This is, I remember you, you're that <laughs> party, <laughs> we're just destined to me. And so it's like, I love this, I want to do this. And basically just like very quickly went through the program, maxed out my credit card. Um, you're welcome, UCB, for all of my hard-earned money, um, but it was worth it. And um, yeah, moved back to Florida and was like, now what? So <laughs> like, I just left the freaking Mecca uh, and came here and just started emailing random people. Like, hi, I like long form improv. Do you do that here? And most people were like, no, we do short form or like we're in Orlando. And so I hooked up with just the funny in Miami and they were doing you know, long form improv. I'm in West Palm. That's like a couple hour drive, you know, with traffic. And so I did a workshop with Susan Messing nice. and, um, and then just started doing like workshops that they would have at just the funny. And I hope this is not too long an answer, but this no, is how we great. Have a, great. you know, for a child together. And so then we, um, you know, I was like, okay, so just the funny did some stuff there. And then I started uh, I was teaching like youth acting and teen acting at this theater and we were renting this theater space. And every time I was ready, getting ready to go in to teach my acting class for kids, there was a group of people coming out. And it's like, hi, how are you? You know, and I was like, I think they're doing improv. I don't know. I didn't know what they're doing. So one day um, someone left a copy of truth and comedy on the thing. And I was like, this is an improv class. This is an, I know this is an improv class. And the teacher came out and he was like, Oh, that's my book. I'm like, truth and comedy. Do you do long form improv? And he was like, yes. And so we started talking and he invited me to come guest on his team and kind of got involved with uh, Mod 27 in West Palm Beach, who was doing long form. And since then, it's just sort of blossomed. You know, I started teaching at my home theater and Improv U opened in Del Rey and Sick Puppies opened in Boca. And there was just sort of this beautiful renaissance that came about in our community that I feel like I was so fortunate because I literally left New York thinking I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. Bet my soulmate and it's gone and then came here and it just was sort of blossoming. So that's a very long answer to, I was once not an improviser. <laughs> now I am. We've had so many improv babies together, and we love each other very much. So I, I, that's a beautiful story because you know so many people like it's you know it, it's more of that like I'd never heard of it, and then I saw it, and then I was in. And you're like, no, no, no I'm I'm gonna take my time here. We're gonna we're gonna slow this down. That's... Yeah, I didn't want to jump into anything. <laughs> so when you moved to New York, you were you said you'd be an actor like a scripted actor. So you're going out for like Broadway and stuff. Yeah, well, not so much Broadway. I mean, sure, that's more like singing, dancing. 
the most of it. I was just auditioning for anything. And I wasn't union. I wasn't um, uh, equity. And so I was just going on calls all over. Yeah. And I did a couple of things that really weren't very good. And I just missed home. Like, yeah. I, I'm so glad I went to New York. I was there for about six years. Oh, wow. And I'd come back. I was backwards. I'd be in New York in the winter in Florida in the summer to teach Ooh. this, like, acting camp. Uh -huh. And I had it totally backward. I don't know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I really miss home. What am I doing? And so I moved home, you know, and yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, um, is it, I feel like the stereotype that I hear, I've never lived in New York, is that every New York actor, if you're there long enough, you audition for Law & Order at least once. Did you audition for Law & Order at any point? You know, I didn't. I broke, I broke that chain. Ah. Yeah, so let people know they don't have to. They can make their own destiny. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I love it. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, you, you courted improv for a while before, before, you, uh, before you two really got together. What is it about improv that always attracted you? Like, what is, what is it that you love about the art form? Oh, how long do you have? Um, <laughs> I'm, I know everyone's a nerd. I have, like, a problem. Um, I... I'm a really big kid. Like, I really am. I'm very, I always have been just very silly and, yeah, I'm, I'm like a child. <laughs> I'm a 42-year-old child. Um, and so I love, I've just been really drawn to that playful aspect of it. And, of course, I'm an actor, and I love, improvisers are actors. I believe that. And so I love oh. the idea of, like, discovering in the moment. I love the process. And I really love, at its base, when we walk the walk, what improv is. You know, the idea of like yes ending your partner, yeah. being there for your partner, um, ensemble, all of that. When there's a community or a group of people or a class or just, you know, when we're really living up to that, that's my favorite. I'm a big hippie. And so I love the idea of like everyone has something to offer and, and you know, letting go of your ego to, to listen to what someone else has to say and dropping anything you had. Like, I just love the process. Uh, I really like everything about it. What? So, short <laughs> answer, simple. Just, um, just you welcome. know, the all of it part, I'm really into that. <laughs> I just really like all of it. I like the word, I like that it starts with an I. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, nice. But yeah, I do. I like the collaborative nature of it. I like that it's process oriented, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about the product. It's, it's just about, yeah, it's a rush. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Every time, right. No matter how long you do it, it's still like, Oh, this is, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I like all of it. Like I love short form. That's super fun. I know some people have camps and I, that's fine. Some people are like short forms, not real improv. And <laughs> other people are like long forms, boring. That's fine. <laughs> You know, and they sound like that. <laughs> that fact, but um, yeah, I feel like <laughs> <you know, laughs> two old men puppets, right? You know, in the balcony, short form, long form. Um, <laughs> but I like all of it. You know, I love games. I love like whose lines anyway style. That is its own skill set. Yeah. It's that's you know, to make that really entertaining. Understand what makes those games work. That's a talent and a skill, and a lot of character work is involved. Bigger characters. Um, and I love long form, I think, because of my acting background and it's all, you know, it all comes together. Yeah. I'm glad that you said that because, you know, I, when I was in Chicago, there was very much a feeling of, you know, the short form and the long form. There was, there was crossover, but there was like definitely those on both sides who kind of looked with disdain towards the others. And, you know, to me, that goes against the spirit of like, no matter what kind of improv you do, it goes against the, the fundamental nature of it in itself. Right. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I think. And there's things, like, I've heard people say mid-form. Have you heard that? People are like, no. I don't like short form or long form. I like mid-form. I was like, what? What is that? Um, and I think that's basically, my understanding is more, someone is going to write an angry comment on <laughs> like, this Please, like, write uh, comments, write comments. <laughs> write, write all, even if they're angry. Um, but someone's like, mid-form is basically a mix of long form and short form, which to me is just like scenic short form games. You know what I mean? Like yeah. short form games maybe um i don't know alphabet game doesn't quite seem like that like alphabet yeah, like game first line last or line or words are numbered where you're happy yeah 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 um but i had someone who's like no that's where it's at i was like all right um but and there's improv that we don't even know about like 
I, I, you know, I took an improvised dance class at the IO, uh, not the IO, that's a lie, um, the Nest, Terra Di Francisco and Rancho Zudo do this mm. um, improv retreat. And they had a, an improvised dance workshop. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. And it was just people getting together and legit like improvised dancing. And that counts. Like it all, it's all wonderful. So yeah, I don't understand snobbery in improv <laughs> when it's all about creation and it's all about I mean, there's, things are better than others, right? Yeah. And we have to be careful because there is this sort of thing where it's like, everything is good. Anything you do is sure. wonderful. Every Everyone get on stage. And that's kind of like, oh, well, it is an art. There's a discipline. There's a, you know, I'm not saying everything has to be good. But, um, yeah, I don't understand snobbery among improvisers with, like, people's forms. Or, well, you're not doing that form right. That's not <laughs> how that's done. That's how we do it. You know, how you do it is different, and that's cool. Yeah. Well, the whole idea is to change, right? It's ever evolving. Yeah. yeah. Change seems to be hard for some people. Uh, <laughs> it's the only constant, so we got to get used to it, you know. <laughs> I mean, from your lips to God's ears, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. So, like, when when you you know you learned improv and then but you've been performing for a while, what is a lesson that you learned from performing that you didn't quite get when you were going through classes either because it wasn't taught to you or maybe it just kind of sailed by that you were like oh i this lesson definitely oh, is, is something that is important that is such a good question i just want to point that out i love that question um oh, you're welcome um doing a great job by the way <laughs> uh, <laughs> just no i don't know if anyone tells you that you're doing great um Yay! i think for me I think it was trusting that it's okay to not get a laugh. Oh. So that's something that I espouse and believe. And it's something that I had been told in classes and that sort of thing. But there is, when you first start performing, there's that thing where it's like, even if you're, you're a part of a team that's a long form team and, and it's like, Hey, we might be funny. We might be moving. We might be a lot of things. There's still that, that pressure, especially if you're going on after a short form team or someone who just killed it, you are yeah. like, Oh, I want to keep this going. I want to ride that energy. And so there was, I don't think I quite fully believed it. It was like, yeah, yeah, we can have moving improv and other people can do it and I can love it, but I'm, I really kind of want to get those laughs. And so I think it just took my performing a while to sit in those silences or to sit in those moments where no one is laughing, but you feel the audience leaning forward. You hear someone be like, Oh, like you hear that little like people being affected, and I was like, "Oh, that's good. That's the good shit." That's yeah, good. That counts. yeah, yeah, more of that. Right there, yeah. Um, but I think I had to kind of experience that to really trust it, and then be like, "Oh, I can do this. Uh, I I can strive for this as well as laughs." And then letting go of striving was something. The idea of like, what am I aiming for tonight, and just sitting in it. I'm constantly learning things, and. Um, yeah, rec I think we all are, right? Recognizing yeah. hangups that we still have or things that we believe, even if we say we don't. And that was one of them. What a good question. Yeah, because I don't think I've actually quite thought of that. But that was a big one for me, is performing and realizing it really is okay to not be Robin Williams or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. And even Robin Williams on any given night wasn't Robin Williams, right? It's like none of us hit bat a thousand every time we get up. That's insane. No, yeah, and that was a thing too. Is the more I performed, the less weight I started putting or pressure I started putting on myself. Like this has got to be a good show. You're like, oh, we're all striving for that. I think the more you perform and the more you study, the more consistent we get in our work, which is yeah. the goal. But man, we're gonna have shows where, you know, I've had shows where I feel outside of myself. Yeah. I I've had shows where I'm like, oh, I'm on stage. I'm picking up an imaginary glass. I should say something. Like, that's happened to me a few times. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Um, <laughs> you know, stuff like that is going to happen. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Have you ever been on stage and all of a sudden been painfully aware that there's, like, a room full of people watching you? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 yeah at, the, uh, at the end of I.O. classes back, at, you know, back when I did a million years ago, they, uh, you had, like, a six-week run. And, mm -hmm. and it was made very clear to you that people were going to be watching, but you didn't know what night, you didn't know when, what people, but they would be deciding whether or not you made it onto a team or didn't. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we cared about that at that time because, yeah. you know, youth. 
<laughs> and uh, I mean, every night I was like, am I doing it right? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's good. It's been good for me as a teacher because the few times that happened was since I would felt comfortable performing. And I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable teaching. I know what I'm doing. But I'm like, oh, this is what it's like. This is what it's, I think, like for newer improvisers or for people who are like, I feel really self-conscious when I'm on stage or I'm in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 that's intense. <laughs> you know, just to feel that again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I you know, love it. Is there anything that you've learned as a performer that uh, that you used to believe that you've learned since that you're like, you know that I used to think this way and it doesn't work for me anymore? Yeah, um, a couple of things. Pretty immediately, I learned that game isn't all there is to improv. And it seems like, yeah, duh. But my first training was, I very quickly went through the UCB program. And so yeah. I was like streamlining, mainlining, whatever that's called, like <laughs> game. And then I took Susan Messing's workshop when I came to, you know, and Just the Funny hosted her in Miami. And I was like, this is great. But what about game? Like, where's the game? And she was like, fuck game. And I was like, hey! <laughs> um, and, she, and she's like, you, you, you're a UCB person? No, or something like that. It's like, mm -hmm, I just graduated. All right. And she's like, it can be different things. can be the context of the scene. Or like, um, so many different, it just listed off all these things. I was like, oh, because that was all I had seen. I had sure. been at Harold Knights and, you know. Just, I just I lived in that theater so that was the first thing I think I let go of and then the second thing I think I let go of was what yes and means mm. to me yeah. um, because I think yes and gets thrown around a lot that sounds like it gets thrown around a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's what we it's what, based, what we do is based on you know yeah that, <laughs> um, but so it gets said a lot but I also think there's a misunderstanding to that and maybe it's just how I took it. I'm not saying necessarily to how it's taught, but how I received it is the idea of like saying no isn't okay. Like it's so much more than just agreeing to what's happening. Sometimes, you know, saying yes and is talking to your partner and not the character you're on stage with. Ooh. That was sort of like an aha moment for me when I was like, oh, Stanley really I don't know a Stanley I don't know why I use Stanley as a name but perfect name we're gonna use it now <laughs> I mean, just no Stanley in my life so so um, no one will think is this me no one will think is this me but if Stanley's like hey don't you come close to me don't you come close to me whatever you do you stay in the past I would be like okay and I'd stay back and now I'm recognizing that that's the improviser is the improviser is asking me to, to come closer to them, you know? Yeah. And David Rozowski really reinforced that for me. I've taken a lot of workshops with him and there's stuff that you know, but let go of, I think, which is why I love being in class. I will take workshops as much as I can, but like I knew that and then sort of let go of it. And he gave an example similar to that about like, take my wallet. I need you to, or don't take my wallet or something like that. And I was like, ah, oh. so that's something I kind of keep remembering as well. If that makes sense. I love it. Yeah. So you had a long flirtation with uh, improv as a performer, but what, at what point did you say, I want to be a teacher? How did that happen? Um, so I had been teaching for a little bit, um, just kids, like a mm -hmm. theater camp at my home theater, Actors Rep. I do like their youth acting, their teen acting, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Their theater camps. Um, and I did not think I wanted to be a teacher. I, I legit, it's hard to say this, but I had a little bit of a snobbery about it. Like when I was in college, I was like, well, I'm not going to teach because those sure. who teach can't do whatever that is. And I started <laughs> doing it just to make some money because it paid well. And I was like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. I really like this and I'm good at it. Like I'm a good teacher. This yeah. is fun. I like it. So that was like an identity crisis I went through early on in my like mid to late twenties. That's a whole other thing for another time. <laughs> um, and so I knew I liked teaching. And then I remember very clearly, this is weird, but I was in Salt Lake city. That's where my husband's parents live. And um, I was just visiting for like Thanksgiving or something and talking about improv and trying to find a home team and how much I loved it. And being like, oh, it would be so, so much fun to teach. Like, I'm not ready yet. But I would love to teach that. I hope I can do that one day. And just knowing that was something I wanted to do. I don't know why I remember that. I legit remember being like in the back seat of the car and espousing this dramatically. And so now I'm doing it. But yeah, I, I kept taking classes and doing 
jams and read all the books and was like, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot happening here. So I'm going to start teaching it. And I just start doing not even quite like drop-ins, like, yeah, every once, like maybe once a week, I kind of host a little something at the studio. My friend's backyard has this like beautiful acting studio. Um, and I was very quick to be like, I'm not an expert yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'm still figuring it out. And if I look back, um, like, was I ready to teach? I think so. But I'm so much, I guess we're just constantly improving. Um, yeah. But I look back and I was like, oh, like things I let slide that I wouldn't let slide now, you know, with like maybe how people talk to each other, even just that like confidence to sure. stop, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That For was me, it. that learning curve is infinite. Like, I'm, I don't think I'll ever master it. No, 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 no. I'm constantly figuring out like my style changes and that kind of yeah. thing. But um, I started doing it and um, it just really studying it, performing it and teaching it and then reading a lot of books, paying attention to teachers I really inspired and like so, uh, who really inspired me, like why is that person so good at it? They're teaching maybe the same thing I teach and I, I think they're doing it better. Like what is that about it? Sometimes it was how they talked to people. Sometimes it was how they managed a classroom. Um, sometimes it's just being succinct in like whether it's side coaching or like the talk to teaching ratio was a big thing. I think I talked way too much when I first started teaching. Um, right. Yeah. I think that's like a universal thing. Um, and half of that I think was trying to figure out what I was saying as I was saying it. Sure. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know. Let me but, talk around this until I, I stumble onto a point somewhere. God yeah. help me. And I still give the worst analogies. Like I, I I'm known with this with like my friends and my students. Um, you know, it have, it's like a, it's like a soup, and and they're like, where, "Where are you going with this?" And I'll I'll say something, and I'm like, "Don't write that down. Don't please don't write that down." Um, so <laughs> it's a thing, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love teaching it, and to me, that's probably one of the most um touch not touchy things, but like I think talk about not having snobbery in improv or whatever because I really do believe that like we're all doing our, our best we're all doing our own yeah. thing but I do think that teaching too early could be a thing I know there are people who disagree with me and that's fine that's mm -hmm. fine you yeah. know like some people are like if you've taken improv for a year or some maybe even just a few months but you feel like you get it and you're you have that you can command a classroom I feel like it's so important what we do uh in the sense of just teaching in general but like you don't want to break someone's spirit. You want to yeah. keep the joy alive while keeping the art good because that matters to me. And things with like codes of conduct and and having the ability to stop a class or give people permission to stop a scene when something happens, whether they're in that scene or not. Um, address hard issues. Um, yeah, I, I, that's the thing I, I struggle with sometimes. I do think that's where like the hippy dippy hey guys everyone in the pool improv is for everyone because it is yeah sometimes sort of water down or even like make what we do a little bit dangerous because i've had so many people be like i improvised for a long time and i stopped doing it because i had my spirit broken or Ugh. because i felt unsafe or because i brought this attention to the teacher and it wasn't addressed so like yeah. that kind of stuff is important probably not just for improv but you know. Yeah, but I mean, and I'm just, you know, I'm so glad that there's more teachers like you out there because improv, unfortunately, has a lot of bruised reputation, right? And it's like, we should be like, no, no, because, you know, one, one thing I do that uh, that uh, I curate my students so hard because, like, I if, if someone is a guest in my class and I don't think they're a good energy, like, I'm you're out. And it's not because, um, well, I don't know, I don't know where I was going with that, but, like, it's because... I I only know how to teach people in a supportive environment, right? right. And it's like I don't want to be in that situation where I accidentally cause someone to get disillusioned with the art form just because I couldn't handle a bad student or something like that. Yeah, right. And and that's interesting to navigate too because I've had I have had students in class. And there's some people who are challenging. You know what I mean? Where like they're yes. quick to defend notes, and I don't care about that because like you could defend all day. Like that's about you or whatever. Sure. But, like, defend notes or like school other people. Are sort of like, well, that was Trisha's fault. Again, I don't know a Trisha or a Stanley, but like, you know, Trisha, well, just to be clear, Trisha negated me or like really defensive. And that can start to trickle in a class. And so part of me is like, this person needs improv. This person needs patience as long yeah. as it's not dangerous. But I, that took time. 
to learn how to address students who kind of like walk that line. Again, they're not bad people, but like, no, that trust, that safe space is so fragile. It's so and important. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thank you, you know, on behalf of all Emperor, thank you for taking the time to keep on it, right? Because, like, as teachers, it's so easy to be lazy and just be like, whatever, you know, and I think so many did that it, it gave us a bad rep. Yeah, and it doesn't mean, like, a safe space is, like, you can't, you can't be honest, right? Like, a safe space is, like, you can't tell the truth or, like, give whatever harsh notes is, because that's why people are there, and you can yeah. gauge who wants the notes and who doesn't. There's yes. the people who are like, give it to me. Then there's people who, like, I just do this on Thursdays when I'm not with my grandkids. And that's fine. You know, I'm not going to pull, I'm going to make up another name, Nancy apart, you know, not with her grandkids. Nancy's doing great. She's doing great. She might not be a a stage performer, but improv is for everybody. I just think maybe not everyone needs to be necessarily up on stage, like a paying audience. Like I believe in showcases. I love that all day. Put a showcase, invite your friends and family, that kind of thing. But if you're going to be like a house team, yeah. uh, I think there does have to be a certain level. But that goes back to what you were saying, though, right? Like, of have fun, have fun. We all have each other's back. Who's going to make the team? They're <laughs> going to be watching sometime. Like, it's such a weird thing that we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so um, do you ever invent exercises or warm-ups? Oh, all the time. Yeah. What's your yeah. process like for inventing a new exercise? You and these questions, they're yeah, but... good. <laughs> um, you know, Should have warned you there were going to be questions. Are, questions. <laughs> oh, hardball! What's happening? <laughs> um, I wasn't prepared. Um, no, I would say for me, I think about, like, maybe there's something I want a group of people to work on. Like, if I'm coaching a team or a class, and there's something where I'm like, oh, they, they need to be more specific like as an example i don't know i don't think well what do i know for that i don't know Uh, that that doesn't quite do it or there's not an exercise quite for that and so i usually see an issue or like a problem or a discipline i'd like to address and either i don't find one or i want more and then just sort of think about well what do i do if i'm with someone who's not doing that thing what is my adjustment and i like teaching like that because we can't be responsible for other people (laughs) life lesson improv (laughs) lesson um but it's all about how we react to things without feeling like we're fixing them um you know what do i do if someone's just really negating me fighting me it's not in the best interest of the scene what are some tools that i can use in a scene to pivot around that or give in to that and let that happen instead of just fighting it. Yeah. I tend to approach it that way. Nice. Does that answer your question? It does. I Yeah. Whatever answer you provide is the right answer to the question. Yellow. That is my final answer. Yellow. Uh, <laughs> this is not a phone. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, it's my hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would say I, I look at like what I think needs to be addressed and I, I tweak stuff. I love giving credit. I'm a huge fan and believer. No one's inventing the wheel. We're all, yeah. when I invent exercises, it is not the first time it's been done. It's yeah. been done all over the world under different names or whatever. Sure. But if I'm taking something and changing it, or if I get something that's really helpful from someone, I'll be like, oh, guys, I got this from Jeff Quintana. I took his drop in. I love it. I don't know where he got it from, but I learned it from him or whatever. Yeah. Um, that feels important or i invented something spoiler alert i didn't really invent it you'll do it again <laughs> somewhere else under i think i did you know sure. like giving credit like that feels important if you learn something i don't know i like that it's almost more like we don't invent them as much as we discover them even if they've already been discovered before exactly yeah exactly we're all discovering the wheel yeah oh that's 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 a great title for a book or something we're all, discovering yeah, we're all discovering. We're all discovering. I'm never going to write a book, but I'm Maybe. <laughs> No, that is, that is, I wouldn't recommend it. It is, is rough. Uh, so be, becoming a teacher, like it was, it surprised you that you loved it. Um, has there any, has there been any lesson that as a teacher that just really surprised you? Like, oh, I didn't know I was going to be dealing with that. Or I didn't realize, you know, I'd change in this way or some, something of that nature. Hmm. I would say, I think it's made me more patient. I don't know that I like, 
I made that choice where it's like, oh, I got to be more patient. I tend to be a patient person. I think that comes from especially starting teaching kids and teens. Yeah. Like that, that's so important, you know. Um, but I do think I've gotten more patient. I also think I've gotten better at standing up for myself. I don't think I've traditionally, I haven't historically been good at that. Uh-huh. And teaching gave me kind of like a, a an inner power that I think I've taken into my everyday life. You know, just standing up for myself. But if I'm talking and someone starts talking over, and that's a big thing, not to make it about gender, because it's not always, but man, I get talked over a lot by men. Teach, you know, uh, not other teachers, but like students, you know, and they're like, say again what I just said. So I'm here, I'm here, let me just rephrase that for the class. Like I've had a few students who legit do that. For the longest time, I was just like, that's annoying. But what are you going to do? Well, yeah. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to say something about it. And I can say it in a nice, compassionate way, because how we talk to each other matters, but without just being like, well, I'm going to get steamrolled like freaking Stanley, you know? <laughs> um, so that's something that I've gotten better at, is like finding my voice, sticking up for myself, and not just being like, well, I have to put up with this, where I did that in real life. But in a classroom, I was able to start making those boundaries, and it's kind of carried over into real life, too, which is healthy, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> As a uh, as, as someone who was had a, uh, a lot of social anxiety and a lot of that, you know, I had, I had kind of the same thing when I was teaching of like, uh, oh, I, I'm in charge. Oh, I got to I have to be in charge. Oh, boy. <laughs> Who's in charge here? Oh, yeah. my circus. My life. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got another steamroll Stanley in here. Oh, boy. oh Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what is, I, I know that you said that you, you kind of, kind of went through pretty quickly for UCB, but like, what is the, the, the culture like comparing New York to West Palm beach? What's the improv? What's the, like the students like, like what the shows, et cetera. You know, I, I don't know that I'm super qualified. I don't have papers to answer this question. I don't think I, you know, I have like the the right paperwork to answer the question. Um, I was there so quick, like legit, like I took the classes and actually went back to take the 501. Like I'd moved back to Florida and stayed in my friend's couch to finish it. I don't know. Um, But I will say the difference is it felt, even though everyone was very nice, there was this goal. There was this, we're all here to get on a house team. Yeah. Um, maybe not everybody, but like a lot of people. That was the main thing. People were taking classes different places. Like I'm at the pit too, and I'm doing stuff here and the magnet theater. And um, there was a very kind of like a hustle, like there was an end goal. And I didn't have that because I was leaving New York. Um, mm. If I had been there, I absolutely probably would have been like, yeah, I want to get on a team and all that. Sure. So it felt very goal oriented in Florida. In, in West Palm Beach kind of community from like Miami to like West Palm, it doesn't feel that way. Um, I am so lucky to be a part of a community that is honestly supportive. We've had shit happen. We had a theater in Miami. I'm going to name them Villain Theater who had a lot of um, sexual allegations come out against them. And they uh, publicly named the accuser and humiliated her and like that kind of stuff. There's little tit for tat things where like someone will do something and you know you're taking my students and all of that. Yeah. Very small. As a very real general rule, our community is stupid supportive. Like we encourage each other to take classes at other places. Um, we share students. We cross promote shows. Yeah. Um, we p- people play on. Maybe like, you know, uh, my home theater's actor's rep, right? And so like an actor's rep house team, but they'll play on Sick Puppies and at Improv U. And we used to go down to Just the Funny in Miami for Herald Night. And a lot of cross-pollination with like homegrown teams and that kind of thing, which I really love. And th- there weren't really auditions. There aren't really auditions to get on teams here. Like Sick Puppies holds auditions. Like you go through their... Casey Casperson, if you're watching this and I'm misquoting you, write an angry letter in the comments. Everyone in the write comments. angry <laughs> comments in the comment section, please. So sorry. Um, but yeah, like I think at Sick Puppies, you had to complete one through five and then you could audition for a, a Sick Puppies house team. That's like a school here. I think it's the same at Just the Funny. Like Improv View, I don't think you had to do that. It was like people would kind of get together 
or, you know, Anthony would like kind of pinpoint people who might be good at playing. That's how it is here too. I'd have a group of people I'm like, you guys are awesome together. You should look yeah. at putting a team together. Or maybe there's a team where we pull someone in, but I've never held auditions. And there's a little bit of an issue here in South Florida because we didn't audition for teams. We'd have people taking different places and be like, this is cool. How do I perform? Because there wasn't yeah. a clear road. And I think that was a little bit of an issue for a while. But then everyone really started creating their own teams and hiring nice. coaches and doing indie nights at different theaters. Almost every theater had an indie night. And so they perform a lot. Um, maybe someone say, hey, you want to, you know, come and perform at our, you know, and so that sort of took care of that. But I feel like I start at point A when you <laughs> and I end up and I'm like, and that's why I love tuna salad. <laughs> and Hello. <I'll>, uh. <laughs> So again, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's great. Um, but I, I love that. I love that hearing about that in a real community because I feel like online I have experienced that a lot. You know, like people will ask me about workshops or whatever, and I'm like, I've got, I know this person in San Francisco and this person in Florida and this person here. Like, I, I like to send people elsewhere, and then sometimes people will send them to me, and I'm like, that's how it should be. It should be, and the only reason we don't is fear is fear yeah. that we're going to lose students, is fear that maybe someone will like another teacher better, is fear that maybe someone's better than I am. Like, I think that's what it is, right? And spoiler alert, yes, there's always someone better than us. Absolutely, Everyone. on any given day. Any, at any, anything, someone's gonna be better than you, smarter than you, and more attractive than you. That's yeah. fine, that's okay, yeah. um, you know, but yeah. Um, I lo I've really encouraged my students, especially now that we're online. I'm like, you guys, you can take classes anywhere in the world. Um, and, you know, we share links and that sort of thing. Some people really haven't done it. They just like my drop-in classes. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. But why not go see what someone else, there's jams, there's classes. But a lot of people have embraced it fully and yeah. totally been like, bye, cat. we'll see you in a while. And I, I'm fine with that. And I think yeah. a lot of people are. Some do both. But um, I had a student of mine say, I'm not going to be doing your classes anymore because there's a some class in the UK. I can't, I can't remember what it was, but I love it. I'm doing that. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Like, we could all be doing that because not one person holds the key. Yeah. And no one owns anybody. There's no such thing as these are my students. And this is my school. Yeah. And all of that. So I really, I kind of came late to the online improv community. I'm not a tech person. You know what I mean? Like I'm on Facebook for like my classes, but really started. Um, I can't even tell you how it happened. I think Charlotte Brown kind of introduced me to some people and I did a set with like Jay and then kind of met some people that way. Very kind of, you know, weird little branching off ways, but then improv boost and started meeting people. And being like, I love their posts. And I love what they're doing. That's how I found you. It was like, yeah. what? Who's rich? This is great. Like that's you know how I saw the first interview I watched and um, all of your posts, and so I kind of fell into that unexpectedly, and I love it because to me it's walking the walk. Yes, it it really is. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. My my favorite author talks about how authors blurb each other's books. You know, and it's like you're not gonna if if you buy a Malcolm Gladwell book. And, you know, someone else blurbs it. Like, it's not like you're taking business from them. Like, that's the terrible way to think. It's a connection economy. The more we connect, the more value there is to spread around. thousand percent. And a healthy community, like, I, I worried about that a little bit. Like, what is the community going to look like when we come out of COVID? Because it was so many different places and there were teams blossoming, blossoming and, like, wanting to hold their own spaces. Part of me is like, okay, so, like, my theater's still open. That theater's still open. I don't know if they have a brick and mortar. That one is. This one's on hiatus. And I wonder, like, what's it going to look like when we come back? Because I can't imagine anything sadder than being like, well, I'm the improv school in town. <laughs> That's not fun. You know yeah. what I mean? A community yeah. builds. It makes all of us stronger. So that quote, rising tides raise all ships. Rising tides raise all ships, yes. Even if you're looking at it from just a... a a monetary point of view, which I'm, I'm, I'm not, but even if you are, sure. it's smarter that way. It's yeah. just like getting our ego out of the way. Everything our little jerk brain tells us, <laughs> what if, what if, what if? And I've had students leave me and not come back. I have, and they're not mad at me. They weren't like, you don't know what you're doing. They were just like, I like this. They yeah. have a clear program. You can audition to get on their team. I'm going to stay here. Cool. It doesn't matter. 
Yeah. I mean, most of my students, you know, took my class and then I've never seen them again. And that's fine. I, I, <laughs> you don't sign up for my class, go, we're lifelong partners. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I make all of yes. I make all of my students wear a tracking bracelet. <laughs> like, it's fine. I just want to know what you're doing, what mm-hmm. shows you're seeing, whatever. Yeah. It says we are not a cult. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, yeah. It's a good point because uh, I think you're my first guest uh, on this show that I've never met in person. <gasps> Shut up. Oh, that's yeah, really we cool. met through Instagram. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because I was I found you somehow random. I don't know how I found you, but like I started sharing your post because like you you post so much like wisdom and cool stuff, and I'm like I gotta share this, and uh, and then all of a sudden like we're talking, I'm like oh you should be on my show. Oh, that's really cool. Thank you. I I didn't know. I just thought you were just like oh I need an improviser. No <laughs> improvises. So I'm up to here with improvisers. <laughs> Well, that's really cool. But not just to return the compliment, because it sounds weird now to be like, no, I also enjoy. But I, I genuinely, um, I, I remember when I started following you, I love what you post, both mm. on your personal page and your improv page. Oh, thank it's you. not just sharing stuff. It's like wisdom. And I love the joy you get from teaching. I hope that's not weird to say, but no. like, I post so much about it. People are like, we get it, Kat. You're having a good time. But I feel like you have that same sense of just joy. Like, I'm so grateful. It's dumb that I get to make a living. Yeah. It's stupid. You it's... know? And I and I have so much fun. Like, where do we go to work and, like, leave elevated? And I feel like you you share that. Like, there's oh, so yeah. much joy in what you post. And I really enjoy that. Yeah, no, no. I, I, yeah, I think, I think we, we've cool. sensed each other's joy. Like, this person loves teaching improv. Like, I love imp- teaching improv. Fantastic! I love it. Yeah. Oh goodness! Oh, the, the cheese factor's up to here, and I am I'm hundred percent fine with it. Um, <laughs> Mozzarella. Anybody? Havarti. Do you say Havarti or Haverty? This is not an improv question. <laughs> it's a, guys, tune out. We've gone to cheese. I want to say mozzarella and Havarti. Is it Haverty? I want to say yellow. Havarti. Uh, <laughs> yes you win him which is what it's all about i tell my students all the time it's about winning <laughs> oh my goodness um what changes have you seen in improv from the from when you got in till now what have you what have you noticed well for me i think it's We'll, we'll start with pre-pandemic because everything changed with that. But to me, um, I feel like it's become more accessible. And that might just be where I am because I really do. I used to word renaissance, but I felt like there was just this improv renaissance here in South Florida where different people like taking agency of what they were doing. Um, and I don't know what, that it was always like that. Because when I first got here, it hadn't happened yet. There were like a couple of schools who were very nice gatekeepers like they were, they were not gatekeepers in the sense that could that you know, we throw that term around too where it's like yeah. down with gatekeepers i agree with that but also sometimes there's just your gatekeeper i'm a gatekeeper i have been you know um and i was like oh what does that mean how do i get around that how do i let go of that and i don't want the gate um <laughs> but for a while there were just a couple people who were like in control of the gate if that makes sense with like who yeah formed and where that changed like that's been a huge change in my community that i've seen since i've been here for what 12 years now something like that back in florida um it's more accessible people are given permission to like create their own art without needing someone to tell them which is good um which is why community is good um (laughs) say that like you need to know it i know you know that it's why community is good i'm writing it down (laughs) yeah um and then pandemic i think same sort of thing i think you realize everyone's like is this going to continue is it going to change and people are like i don't know i think it will for a lot of people like i think some people probably go back to doing both you know some people hate virtual improv and may never do it again but um i think we realize how small the room is that we're in with this pandemic you know what i mean like it's such a small world and so i think that's going to change how we I don't know, interact with each other post pandemic. I think it'll stay. I think that that will, that will, you know, persevere. hundred percent. Yeah. 
Uh, Kat and I can talk to you all day, but, uh, but uh, you know, we, we, we just couldn't. Actually, I can't. We can't do that because we, we have lives. So uh, yeah. where? We have, to, we have to walk my dog. Yeah. And that's important. Uh, it is. Plugs. Send people places. Where do you want them to go? Oh, I'm the worst at this. Um, <laughs> I have. I really, I need to work on this. Um, how do you find me? Carrier pigeon is <laughs> good. Um, knock on my door. So I would say Cat Kenny Improv. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Cat Kenny Improv. And um, yeah, I do weekly drop in classes that are pay what you can twice a week on or twice, um, two times each Monday. And I also teach class series to my home theater, Actors Rep. You can check out actorsrep.org. That's my home theater. Um, I coach. I do a lot of improv coaching for individuals and teams. Um, and now I feel like I'm a commercial. And, and, and if you order now, <laughs> if you order now, you'll get Havarti or Havarti. You don't know. It's yellow. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, great. Well, I'll put all that in the in the show notes, uh, of course, to send people your way. Kat Kenny, thank you so much for being on the Improv Break. So this was so enjoyable. I appreciate you asking so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about improv, uh, please put them in the comments below to get notified about upcoming episodes. Uh, subscribe to the Roland and Riches YouTube channel and click the little bell icon below. Thanks, improvisers, and keep making each other look good. <laughs>